one of these kind of I have to vent, I have to say something because mm. um, my wife's Australian, so she not that she didn't get it, but she you know she knows that it was important to me. But it's one of those things you just have to kind of get out and you know share things with your, your family and friends back home, you know. So I got this thing about, and I'll, maybe I should just read it. And I, I kind of I, I made reference to the old football thing, and it's another glorious defeat for Scotland. Yeah, it's one of those ones you've done really well. But we just didn't get over the line, but you know, good on us for doing it. So, yeah. Anyway, I've got this. I'm just going to read little bits of it. So, what an amazing yeah. opportunity it was for the whole nation. In my opinion, my fellow Scots blew it. No point blaming the voters as they chose what they perceived was right for themselves, and I've no issue with that. If you're looking to point the finger of blame, start with the major UK political parties, so called celebrities, and in particular the newspapers and TV stations for creating fear amongst vo- voters. If there'd been an honest, fair and honest representation in old media, then I believe there'd be a whole different outcome. Modern yeah. slash social media almost yeah. won this time. And if there is a next time before I shuffle off this mortal coil, then I'm confident there'll be a different outcome. Yeah. Lastly, for any of my friends back home who voted no, then I wish you good luck with that Cameron fellow, as he's about to utterly shaft each and every one of you. Rant over. And <coughs> that's oh, oh. exactly how oh, it feels. Like he he's about to shaft each and every one of you right up the arse. Oh, well, yeah, but, and again, it was interesting sort of watching Liam's um, comments on, on Facebook and Liam I, I, Liam did take it um, probably a bit more I was I was impacted for a fair few days probably am even now Fe- felt really down about it I just you know I couldn't couldn't think of anything else it was just like you know I just felt really sad for all the nation all your, your ancestors and all that sort of stuff you know you just felt really bad for it so and I had to think about it over that weekend and exactly the same feelings what Liam had that and I basically changed my picture on, on Facebook, what do you call it, a little icon that, you know, yeah. next to your name and stuff like that. And I changed it to a little um, Antrim. Avatar. Avatar. I was like, little Antrim avatar. And I had mates, uh, John Sorry. Manning, you know, he's a... He's, uh, <laughs> I didn't John mean, I didn't mean to sound so smug there. <laughs> so, so people sort of winding me up saying, you know, so you're, you're Irish now, are you? And I was like, well, I don't feel very Scottish at the moment. I genuinely don't. And to a certain extent, I probably still don't. So over the weekend, I didn't speak to anybody about this, not even my wife, not my brothers, nothing. I just had to think about this. And I can exclusively reveal and tell everybody who have listened to this thing that I am doing exactly the same as Liam, and I am applying for Australian citizenship. Good for you. Crazy. You've only been here about 40 years, mate. I've been here for, God, 16 years. Jesus, Webb, you're a disgrace. That's it. Because, and do you know one of the reasons for doing it is, I think it was 1999, I can't remember the exact year, um, Australia had the opportunity to vote for a republic. And yeah. obviously I couldn't vote, I'd only been here for a year or so by that stage. Um, I was yeah. a citizen, so. And I thought to myself, do you know what, see when that ne- comes around next time, and there will be a next time in my lifetime, I want to be in a position where I can, oh. at the moment I've got no vote anywhere. I can't That's make right. a difference anywhere. And I thought, do you know what, I'll go through the expense of becoming a citizen. Of Australia. It's only a couple of hundred bucks, mate. It's a couple of hundred bucks, and I will make sure when it comes to that point where I have to vote and say, Australia, do you break away from this whole um, monarchist and all that sort of stuff and just become your own republic? <coughs> then at least I can have a say and vote for it. Because Australia did exactly the same thing as Scotland did back then. They blew it. But they blew it in a different way. They blew it in the fact that the government manipulated how people voted. So, non yeah, Scotland, but also they, Scotland, they, Scotland, they, Scotland, 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 so they had two options of what sort of republic they wanted. So mm. they either had said, no, no, we have a status quo and we stay as we are, or you have a republic one or republic two. So what happens is you get the republic vote and you split it right down the middle, half go that way, half go that yeah. way. Yeah. Which ends up with Sneaky. a no. So, Devious bastards. And that's exactly how they did it over here. <laughs> From what but I remember, again, again, I'm not politically motivated. But you've got it, and this is, this is what I found comical, Pat, because you had, and again, apologies to the people back home that don't know who this clown Tony Abbott is. Tony Abbott's the Prime <laughs> Minister of, of Australia, and uh, <laughs> he's a, 
he's a he's in the Liberal Party, which is basically the equivalent of the Tories back in the UK. And um, the unfortunate thing is, this wee guy is a die-hard practicing Timite. Um, but he's very, very, he's ultra conservative and he's just following in the footsteps of a David Cameron or a Maggie Thatcher. He's basically, he, he would look up to these people. Now, the saddest thing, from, well, not the, the saddest thing, but a very sad thing was this wee clown just came out, obviously on the back of a text message from David Cameron or a phone call from David Cameron to throw his hat in the ring in terms of Australia, to say, oh, blah, 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 blah. Scotland is stronger as part of the union. Don't don't leave the union, blah, de, blah, de, blah. And I thought to myself, Jesus Christ, you've got a cheek. Australia got their independence from Great Britain over a 100 years ago now. But yeah, this is the same little man right now that says... Because what you're talking about, Pat, you're talking about the Republic thing, which is different. Yeah. That's the monarchy. Now, that we can treat that in a separate context. But the whole thing about being an independent nation, you had to laugh at the gall of this wee man that came out to say, you know, Scotland's stronger as part of being part, you know, part of the United Kingdom. Whereas Australia... 113 years ago voted for their independence and they got their independence. What we're looking for now in Australia is, as you quite rightly say, Pat, a republic, so get rid of Lizzie, etc, etc. But that can take care of itself. But this wee guy just came completely out of the blue, as did Barack Obama, who obviously got a text from David Cameron or a bloody phone call to say, Barack, going to just say, ah, Scotland, you're better being part of blah blah blah, part of Britain, we'll go gung-ho, we'll go gung-ho in the wars against anywhere that there's oil to be won or had. So that for me was, again, pretty disgraceful. Who's making a cup of tea? Mm-hmm. I mean, somebody's <laughs> doing something, isn't he? Yeah, watch <laughs> I think it's Martin. It was right, me. Uh... Martin, I've deliberately left duty last, mate, because... Even looking at your picture on Skype, you look like a David Cameron Tory boy oh. and a no voter. But not that you had a vote <clears> in this whole thing anyway. But I did see on your timeline at some point that you said along the lines of you'd been reading all the stuff, you'd seen social media, you'd made your own mind up and yes seemed the best choice. Well, let me let me start with a, a couple of things. First of all, I'm actually an Australian citizen. I'm also yes. a, I'm also an Irish citizen. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, part of sorry, Liam, I don't know, uh, and I don't want to ask about your family or anything. But uh, my wife is actually Australian, and uh, Britain wouldn't give her a passport. She has the, or she certainly had at the time, the right of abode there, so she could go and, and work there and live there as my partner. But couldn't get a passport. However, Ireland at the time, if you were an Irish citizen, your partner automatically got a passport or automatically got citizenship. So I quickly took my citizenship and then my wife got it before the rules changed. So I've actually got citizenship of three countries. And, yeah. and look, if now I can I believe still vote in UK elections but not in the in the independence referendum. But I choose not to and I always choose not to because I don't pay tax here. I don't live there and I don't think I should influence it. Yeah. Um, I at the start of the whole independence thing, I, 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 sorry, I'm a socialist. I, I believe in, in equality. I believe in, you know, and good in mind. People working together. I, um, I thought the theory behind the, and then again, this is back at the start. The theory behind the Scottish independence was good, but I wondered if we could afford it. If we could afford, um, you know, why did you? No, think no, no, no. That, just, um, just let me. Right. Yeah. Okay. That was my thing. Could you afford everything? Could you afford, you know, very, very good, you know, good pensions? I'm not, you know, and, I, and I'll be honest, part of it is I've been away from Scotland now 20 odd years. I don't know what yeah. the pension is over there. I don't know what the dole is over there. Any of this. I'm putting a big caveat on everything I'm saying. But I did wonder, can you afford all, all of these things? Um, I did get most of my information from social media. So I, I always sort of made that stat. 
but there was a few things that, and I was I was over there for the Com Games, and I, I, I read a lot and I, I seen a lot on on the ground, and um, there's just a couple of things that really that really affected me. One of the main things is I grew up in a, a I grew up all over Glasgow. One of the places was Mary Hill, and I actually had a chat with um, one of the guys I went to school with. Or I think he was either in my year or the year above me. Mary Hill now has food banks. Now I grew up and. I bonus we didn't have a lot in, in my household. Um but we didn't have people going to food banks and that that really that really bothered me. And I'm talking about this isn't your um, and you know one of the um one of the social media posts from the guy in Edinburgh saying, Look, even I'm gonna be very honest and I, I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, Look, I expected to go along and it was people with drug and alcohol problems were along getting stuff from food banks. He said it's normal working class people. Yeah. And, you know, people with jobs are going to food banks, and that that's just not right in the in the twenty first century when we're a, a modern a modern society. Um, mm. So I I would have um, I would have voted yes. I certainly, as I said at start, was not not sure which way which way to go. And part of it is just I didn't have enough information on it. Yeah. And I think I was very skeptical because look, social media. There's so much. That can be said and that can be reported. And you go, how real is this? You know how you know. Come, come back to that. You know how many food banks? Is it just people that are down in the luck that are in food banks? I, I would assume there was always that. There was always you know places <coughs> going. You know food vans for homeless people and that. But there's never been somebody being homeless. And um, I'm not knocking it at all. But you know somebody down in the luck with maybe some drinking drug problems or whatever. But you know having to go to you know a soup van. And, and working class family, so a guy I'm in the minimum wage that can't put enough food on the table to feed his family for a week. Um, mm. So certainly I would have voted yes. A couple of comments I would like to make, but is that um, I think it's really good that at least the, a country decided its future with the ballot box and not the bullet. I think you need to look at a lot of countries over the world that have finally got independence. Now, I do think the media had a lot to play in it, and I think some people in the media need to have a good, long, hard look at themselves. But this was a chance to to have a to define our future without there being blood in the street. And I think as a country, we should at least be proud that we had it. I think probably the nicest thing about the whole thing is that... Um, sorry. The nicest thing about the whole thing is that we suddenly had a population engaged in politics. We suddenly had a population wanting to talk about real issues and debating it. And I think that was, I do think as a positive thing, that was wonderful. I think probably the biggest thing for me is the, um, and it was, um, there was a couple of comments, and I totally agree with them, that we'll promise we'll give you stuff the day after the vote um, mm. was never going to work, basically. It's that. Um, but it did, unfortunately. And, and look, there was some real scare campaigns, and I understand some of the older people when they're getting told, "Well, you can't use a pound, so how are you going to get a pension if it's in a different currency? And are you going to go to euro?" And look, I actually, somebody at work said, and um, I actually think this, <laughs> um, the no campaign. One of the things it maybe should have done was just simply go, "You want to go, go, but don't come back." But I think to me, I think part of it was. The no campaign was so, and I know it sounds ridiculous, but it was so negative. Yeah, that were, were best. It doesn't sound ridiculous at all. That's exactly what it was, Martin. No, no, but do you know what I mean about? So I, I remember I've had like I, I, I'm interested enough in politics, or even in Australian politics, where I've talked to people and they've said, "Oh, I voted Labour or Liberal." So that's the, the Liberal Party, the Tory Party here in Australia. Yeah. Of um, this and that, and it's always I, I prefer to vote for somebody because of what they stand for, not because the other people are against it. Now, I do think generally I, I've got an opinion that you vote a party out, you don't elect a party. So my thought was, especially when it was close and there was a lot of undecideds. If you're in that, if you're in the ballot, uh, if you're in the the polling booth. And you're not sure, you'll go for the status quo and the status quo. And that's why I think it got to the, the fifty-five percent rather than the you know the, the fifty-one or, or fifty-two percent. Um I think it's um I think it's good that we're in the com- the country's engaged. I think and again this is only from social media, but I think Labour is in all sorts of trouble in, in Scotland. But I think Definitely. I think the the no campaign played a blinder by just messing the water up enough. But I would also say that 
you know, there's stuff I've seen on on um, so social media about um, you know people being cowards and that. 